Thank you for downloading from the BBC. For details of our complete range of podcasts and our terms of use, go to bbcworldservice.com slash podcasts. After the re-election of Silvio Berlusconi this spring, Italy has rarely been out of the headlines with its radical approach towards immigrants, the judiciary and the Naples rubbish crisis. In this week's Friday documentary called The Italian Patient, the journalist Annalisa Piras travels to the north and south of her country to examine the health of Italy. When I was growing up in Italy, I remember this song moving my father to tears. It's like an alternative national anthem. Long live Italy in the middle of the sea, half garden, half prison. Long live the Italy that works hard, that despairs, the Italy that falls in love. This song captures the sadness of a special nation, full of spectacular beauty and hidden horrors, forever struggling to become a normal country. Today, for me, the struggle is particularly acute. My name is Annalisa Piras. I'm the London correspondent for Italy's L'Espresso magazine and LA7 TV. I left Italy 16 years ago, but I've come back for the BBC World Service to discuss the health of the Italian patient at this critical time. A few facts. Italy has the highest public debt, the highest inflation, and among the lowest salaries in the EU. One in five young people cannot find a job, and it's even worse for women. Two-thirds of the population say that they cannot manage on their monthly incomes. First stop on my journey around Italy, Naples, the capital of the Campania region. Once one of the brightest cultural cities in Europe, Naples has recently been buried under a mountain of rubbish. It's also blighted by organized crime and been heavily criticized over its attitude towards immigrants. But not everyone is gloomy. Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi is happy. He won a landslide third victory this spring by promising to restore the Italian patient to full health. His first stop, too, was Naples. Thanks to me and my government, the new Prime Minister says at a press conference in Naples, all is now well. We have cleared the streets and given Naples back to the world. After his victory over the centre-left, Berlusconi's coalition of his own Forza Italia party and the post-fascist National Alliance, together with their ally, the Federalist Northern League, they became the strongest right-wing government in Europe. The coalition's most high-profile representative in Naples is Italo Bocchino of the National Alliance. The problem afflicting Naples is the result of many errors. The politicians of the left running this city were irresponsible and wasteful. The crisis should have been dealt with immediately. And of course there was corruption. When you spend 2 billion euros over 15 years in a declared state of emergency without ever solving it, then someone got rich somewhere. The Camorra, the local mafia, certainly profited. And they did everything to make it worse. Roberto Saviano is 29, another famous Neapolitan, a writer and journalist. I'm in Naples, but I can't visit him. We have to talk on the phone from his place of hiding. Saviano risked his life to expose the Camorra, the local mafia. His acclaimed book, Gomorra, has sold one and a half million copies in Italy and been translated into 20 languages. If politicians are unclear or at a loss about what to do to fight the Naples mafia, then this man has the answers. Today, the two most dangerous criminal organizations in Italy are the Camorra of Naples and Campania and the Andrangheta based in Calabria. I would define them as criminal entrepreneurs. They started as businessmen and became criminal to maximize their profits. Profit is their only objective. They work in textiles, transport and petrol stations, but mainly in construction, concrete and cocaine. 
The poverty of the South is a boost to them. Labor is cheap, it's often black, they may use violence to further their business, and these days often work in collaboration with Chinese traders in Italy. They are growing at a phenomenal rate, thanks to globalization, and because some countries, including Britain, do little to combat them. They work with the state, so much so that it becomes difficult to distinguish. They even boast that they are the state. How close is their relationship with politics? Is it cohabitation or something even tighter? Yes. Once, both the right and left parties had high-profile mafiosi in their ranks, and it was thanks to their support that they got votes. Today, they lean neither right nor left. Parties still buy votes, but criminal organizations are run just like uh, General Motors or Mercedes like big corporations with lobbyists who pressure politicians and offer them favors. The Camorra is an economic problem, first and foremost. I am saddened after the interview with Roberto Saviano, proud that Italy has created such a brave man, but ashamed that Italy has forced him into hiding. There is something else I'm deeply ashamed of, what I detect as a new racism in my country. It's reckoned Italy has 4 million legal and possibly 1 million illegal immigrants. And I believe it's this dramatic increase in recent years that has frightened some people and given the new government cause to crack down. This September, 500 extra troops were sent here to Naples after the murder of six African immigrants. The killings were blamed on the Camorra. The families of the dead say it was racism. The common complaint in Italy is that foreigners are responsible for the rising crime. In July, the government ordered the army into the streets of our main cities and the fingerprinting of 150,000 Roma gypsies. I'm on the beach, Torre Gaveta, near Naples, but I'm not here to relax. This is where two young Roma gypsies drowned, 13-year-old Cristina and 14-year-old Violetta. They had spent a hot day trying to sell trinkets to sunbathers and decided to go for a swim. Their dead bodies were left for more than an hour on this beach while people around them continued sunbathing. A photograph of this shocking scene went round the world. I've come to the Pontigliano Roma camp just outside Naples. Violetta and Cristina lived here. The camp is very dirty, a small cluster of prefabricated huts and tents. 700 gypsies live here without water and toilet facilities. The children have led me to the girl's mother. Her name is Miriana. She's crying and she's really angry. You ask how's the situation? They're racist. They were there watching and doing nothing while my daughters were dying. This is the girl's granddad. There is terrible racism against us, Roma, in Italy. We are Italians. Many of us have been here for years, decades, and now they are fingerprinting us. He says it's like Hitler in the 1940s. <laughs> 